Good morning and welcome. It is Tuesday the 17th of May. I am Flat Cap Callum and I'm hoping you are all very, very well. You will see the Flat Cap has been doth today um, to signify the fact that uh, as of yesterday I've reached 1,000 subscribers and I genuinely can't thank you enough. Uh, when I started this it was a bit of an experiment and I thought I'll see if anybody's interested in what I'm offering. Um, so to get to the point of, of the milestone of 1,000 subscribers is just amazing. So thank you to every single one of you that has pressed that subscribe button or ever liked or commented on the video or any of you who are having an epiphany now and think, oh, I watch Callum every day, but I've never pressed subscribe. Maybe I'll do that now just so he gets an extra subscriber because it's no skin off my nose because I'll get a little red dot in my subscription box. Um, yeah, I've, I've just bowled over. Um, and uh, and I, before I kind of get into today, I, just, I guess just wanted to acknowledge that, um, yeah, just I really appreciate every single one of you because... Um, I didn't know when I started this whether people would watch, but also, you know, in, in the internet, putting yourself out there, uh, how much abuse you might get. And actually, there's been the odd, odd, only funny, funny folk along the way. There's definitely been some funny folk. Um, but the vast majority of people who watch the video, who comment, who, uh, you know, tell me if they like or dislike are really, really positive. And, uh, and that's just really nice. Um, and it does, uh, you know, it does just sort of warm your cockles a little bit and make you think actually yes you, you hear lots of things on the internet about there's a lot of doofuses about but actually the vast vast majority on here have been have been really lovely you know the, the very very first person to comment has to be said said uh, these bets are stupid you know nothing about horses um so you know everybody's entitled to an opinion um and that was the very first comment but uh, since then the uh, the the less rude comments have, uh, have, have have kind of been few and far between and I just really appreciate those of you who who comment uh, every day or some of you comment on a on a kind of ad hoc every now and again. And then there's some of you that, that you know, like you'll, you'll message and say, I don't normally comment, but I wanted to comment. And that all of all of it is just lovely. So please feel free to carry on commenting. It's very nice of you. It's very kind of you. Um, I mean, the point was for me when I started, I was like, I think I'll I'll. I'll give I'll give YouTube a bit of a go um, because basically I feel like I can try and help some people. So as I've said many times, I've bet all my life. I uh, haven't done it as uh, anywhere near as seriously as I've you know I've done it in the last few years, um, and and I haven't always been profitable. So originally when I started, like most people, you, you don't make money and you learn long you learn you know as you go. You learn how to which races are better. You learn how to read form. Um, and I've got you know systems and processes that I follow now that make me a profitable gambler. Um, and you know, putting out on the channel what I wanted to do is put out um, the easiest stuff to follow. So I try and avoid the side markets generally. That is what I was I was trying to avoid. Just doing mainstream markets that most people can access and put it on with a high street bookmaker or indeed online. Um, trying to promote the fact that Skybet is by far the best one in terms of making easy profit because of the extra place races. Um, so I wanted to do that. Statistics are massively important to me. I always keep loads of statistics. So I, I haven't seen anybody out there on the internet that, that's providing the level of statistics that I can for the channel that I've got. Um, and to me, that's what I've always said. I want to be judged on the, the long-term profit and loss. And at, right now, the channel is running just over 20% all sports, 22.5% for horses. So the profit and loss is really, really decent. We've made profit every month. Um, and... Yeah, so, so I mean, you know, to be fair, I expected, expected to at least hit one bad month by now. It, it will happen, uh, but we're, we, we've managed to get away with it thus far. So statistics are really important to me, but also what I didn't see anyone doing was multiple multiple bets. And for me, I want to make it a bit fun. I don't want to just sort of pick the statistically best races of the day and, and you know have a punt on that. I want to be able to put a staking plan out there, explain why I'm selecting the horses I do, because I can explain every single one of them. And I don't mind sharing, because the whole point here is we're trying to get more money back from the bookmakers so that more casual punters um, have, have got a bit of profit. So more than happy to explain any time why I'm picking a horse. And I guess the, the, the thing with that is is, is staking plans and, and volume are not for everybody, and I appreciate that, and that's why I didn't know what what, what people were gonna people were gonna watch or not because it's quite niche. So basically, doing a niche subject within a niche subject, um, because some people just want a horse, um, and some people just want one bet, and 
that isn't what I'm about. And obviously some days I put out one bet and most, but most days it's multiple bets. Um, but multiple bets isn't diluting the profit and loss for the channel. And I think that's a really important point to make. Um, you will have a lot of people out there who will give you a tip and they may or may not keep statistics. The, the statistics I've got are based on the volume I've got. Um, so yeah, that is what I want to say. Um, I'm not saying I'm the best or the biggest. I'm just trying to basically do do what I do. And I, I do believe in terms of uh, the volume, I don't think anyone else is doing it. And the level of statistics that I can provide, I don't think anyone else is doing that. Um, but also important to me, I ain't got no whizzy slides, no music. It's just chilled um, and relaxed, uh, and deliberately so. A, that's my style, and B, it's really, really helpful given the subject matter to uh, to not be whizzy and bangy in terms of what you're doing. All right, so what have we got today? It's a lot of racing, um, but I'd say it's a weekday. Um, so I'll come to that. The review of yesterday, quite quickly, um, can't remember, I've actually lost lost it from yesterday. I can't remember where the, where the slip of the rope out is. First horse, Ventura Flame, went in. Never seen a horse. I really just don't think I've seen a horse in a, in a sort of fairly average five furlong handicap win so ridiculously comfortably. Um, it looked like it was hanging out the back and then he just flew past and Billy Garrity just like properly looked round. You just don't see that in a five furlong handicap. Um, so that was a really nice winner. Then we had a non-runner. Then the next one underperformed um, and then Darren's Hope uh, got done near the line. So it was a place. So I got it as five on 568 back, 68 pence profit. If you'd got the SP or, or the better than eight to one adventure of flame, you would have done better than, than the channel. Definitely. Um, Darren's Hope, I had 13 to two, but I think I had a 20 P rule for deduction SP at five. So it was not much different in that. Um, so yes, yeah, so if you had a better for Prost and Venture of Flame, you'd, done, you'd have done all right. Or equally, to be fair, if you'd done singles, you'd probably done all right yesterday. Um, so that was yesterday. Today, I've got two bets. Um, so this is bet one, it's my main bet. So I'm doing it as a half stake, £10 today. Um, three of these are three-year-old handicaps, which is not my preferred uh, race of choice. So, um, so yeah, there's caution within this. Um, I, I, you get funny results. I don't like them, um, but that's what I'm working with today. And I found I found enough that I'm I'm, I'm happy to put a bet on uh, with the channel. So we've got one thirty Brighton, Sir Duke twenty fives, one forty Nottingham Empress Sheba eight to one. Then we've got a massive gap, and we've got two at Killarney. So six fifty five Silken Ladder. That's been backed in massively overnight. It was 20s solid last night and it's sixes now. I'm not sure whether that one will bounce like some of them do um, or whether that will hold because the price was just a bit silly last night. Um, and then the last one is the only non three year old handicap, um, Eastern Racer 11 to one. So I've just done it as a 20p each way, lucky 15. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, for those of you who like singles, Top one, bottom one may be worth it. I wouldn't worry about the, the middle two. Even if, you know, they win, they win. But um, but top one and bottom one might be worth the single. But for the today on the bet on the channel, that's what we've got. And then the last one I've done, I was doing a national hunt bet and I've had a few non-runners and stuff and I'm, I'm kind of okay with where we've got to, but it's not the greatest bet in the world, being honest. Um, so we've got 547 ints, seven to one, only paying two places in that race. 647 uh, Huntingdon, Glory Diathon, 17 to 2, only two places in that race, too. And then the 838 at Hexham, My Macho Man, 14 to 1. I think most bookies are four there. Watch out, I think Paddy, the one it's on Paddy, it says they're four, but they're not. So watch out for that one. Uh, 20p each way, Trixie, and 340p each way, Singles is how I've done it. So, yeah, a bit of a risky one, particularly this one, seven runners and that, and you know my thoughts on seven runner races. So a bit of a risky one on that one. Um, that's only five runners, um, and that's a, a much bigger field. So that's my tentative £10 today. Uh, I've put out better bets, but the point here is any bet I'm putting on the channel, I think is all right. So uh, so it's, it's there. Um, I said I was going to do the golf tomorrow, but because it's one tournament, I've kind of already got the golf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for it now, but I will repeat it tomorrow um, because it is the USPGA after all, probably the fourth best major. So I've got this, I'll do, go through the golf bet, but I will repeat it tomorrow for those of people who are waiting for the golf tomorrow. So golf, um, 
these are my singles. So I've got singles and a lucky 15. I've managed to get lucky 15 I'm happy with. So singles uh, are these. So, and it's a should flag as well. It's £12 golf bet this week. Um, so it'll work out six on singles. I know there's only five pounds on this page, but six on singles and six pound on the lucky 15, 12 pound on the golf this week. So uh, best three on the golf for singles. We've got Keegan Bradley, 70s, Billy Horshaw, 80s, Davis Riley, 150s. So as always a flag here, I'm using Skybet. I'm using the eight place market on Skybet. There are bookies paying 10. So you shop around and you will get better prices for some of these. So I'm just using, to make it nice and straightforward, the eight place market on Skybet. The, the odds are better in the eight place market than the 10 place market in terms of when it works out as fractionals. Clearly, if, if someone comes ninth or 10th, you lose out. Um, but on balance, in terms of the win part, it's much better to do them on the eight place market on Skybet. So those are the top three and they are 50p each way singles. I've then got the bottom four, Taylor Gooch, Kevin Mitchell, Ryan Palmer, Cameron Tringle. Those are all 25p each way singles. So you will, might notice, those of you astute golf fans, I've got seven Americans in my single bets, all Americans in the single bets. Um, so they are those. Hopefully that's it. As I said, I'll go for it again tomorrow. And then the lucky 15. I'm going for it a little bit here with a bit of a price. Um, so what have we got for the lucky 15? Top Englishman, Richard Bland, 14s. Then we're going top Asian, Anabana Lahiri, 9 to 1. Top South African, Charles Schwarzschel, 6 to 1. And the monster in the bet, top continental European, Alex Checker, 100 to 1. So I've done it as a 20p each way, lucky 15. And then a 50p each way single on Alex Checker. For those of you who like the single market, Bet365 are offering two and a half thousand to one Alex Checker for the tournament. You might want to have a look there. He's seven fifties to a thousand in most places, but Bet365, two and a half thousand to one on Alex Checker. Um, so that is the lucky 15. So uh, just a word on that, Alex Checker. So a lot of people won't, who, play, who follow golf won't know Alex Checker. So... He, he was he was a professional golfer, but he wasn't he didn't achieve much of note um, in his main professional career. He sort of come more to prominence last year on the seniors tour. So his first two tournaments on the seniors tour, he won both the tournaments, and one of them was um, at the same golf course that they're playing the U, U, the P, US PGA at. So he's got form on the golf course when a lot of others have not. Um, he's then been a little bit in and out of form and he did get in a bit of trouble uh, for uh, having a dodgy greens book in the last tournament, <laughs> in the last uh, uh, Champions Tour tournament. He actually got disqualified. So uh, as long as he keeps them straight and narrow, um, we're, we're all right. But I just think the, the price was way, way too big to walk past um, because he, he is relatively unknown and he's come from the seniors tour. He will get ruled out. Now, he, he may well not, not do a lot, um, but we'll see. But I think the price is worth having to go. I guess the thing I would flag with this, more than most of the lucky 15s I do, it's a much riskier one, not just because of the prices, but because it's the US PGA. There's a lot more American players playing. That therefore, statistically, it, 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 trying to get enough of these people to even make the cut is, 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 you know, is hard work. So if three make the cut, I'd be really happy, to be fair. Um, because it's, it's a major, so the cut the cut mark's going to be tough. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, just coming in the top half. So, you, you know, I don't know whether, you know, even in some of these, you might end up like the, the you could have a tie for third, missing the cut, I don't know. It really depends. Um, it has happened before in some of these tournaments. Um, so it's one to keep an eye out. I will repeat the golf bet tomorrow, so I'm not going to um, put it on the video today that I've got the golf bet. I'm going to, Put it on the title of tomorrow's video, if that makes sense. But that's the golf bet, and I'll repeat it tomorrow. Okay, that is me for today. Uh, that was a very long one, but I appreciate all of your time. And once again, amazing, amazing thank you for uh, getting me to a 1,000 subscribers. Because, yeah, like 140 videos I've, since I've started. I've done a video every day since the 10th of January. Uh, and just, yeah, amazing. Way, way surpassed my expectations. So thanking you very much. Have a lovely day. See you in the morning. Cheerio.